If you're a software engineer or working to become a software engineer, you've probably heard about the fear of AI taking over all programming jobs. And though this may seem likely, especially because it's written by 23 year old new grads working at Goldman Sachs, I think everyone needs to take a step back and just relax. Everyone thinks that programmers are doomed and if you don't adapt and actually change to AI, then you probably are doomed. But in this video, I wanna give you a little bit of an overview of how you as a programmer can adapt and work with AI instead of letting AI take over your job. Adapt or die. At a high level, AI is just another tool in the developer's toolkit. Right now, it can seem overwhelming and as if AI is using a power drill while you're stuck at home using a manual screwdriver, but a better way to think about it is that AI is just another way to improve and grow your tech stack as a developer. And if you're like me, the words tech stack probably got you really excited and now you're ready to watch 100 hours of YouTube tutorials instead of actually build something. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Jokes aside, I think using AI and thinking of it as a part of your tech stack is gonna be the real way to actually adapt and utilize AI in your workflow as a developer. Just as people had to adapt with new technologies in mobile development and new web frameworks, AI is just another technology that you have to learn and adapt to. And it all begins with prompt engineering. By now, you probably already know what prompt engineering is. You give a language model like ChatGPT an input or a prompt, and it gives you an output based on what you gave it. This can be anything from code to an essay to a script for the next viral YouTube video. Please comment, like, and subscribe below. This sounds really easy and there's a lot of debate out there if prompt engineers are real engineers, but to be honest, prompt engineering is an art and we can confirm that because there are so many thread boys out there on Twitter trying to tell you how to become a better prompt engineer and sell you their course. But just like thinking about JavaScript and Python, when you think about those languages and the fundamental pieces of them like loops or functions, there is an art to prompt engineering and in order to get good at it, it does take a fair amount of practice. And if you actually put in the time to learn how to become a prompt engineer, there are actually jobs out there today Day that are paying around $300,000 for people who can provide that service. Of course, that may be one company right now and the market will get saturated and those, those salaries may come down, but there is gonna be a market for people who know how to speak to AI language models in an effective and efficient way. There are very few good prompt engineers out there right now and it's actually really important to remember that talking to different language models takes different types of prompting. So just because you're talking to ChatGPT or talking to Bard, you can't necessarily talk to those two robots in the same way. You have to understand how that specific language model works and what prompts are best for that specific language model. So all of that to say that if you're actually going to be a software engineer that adapts to AI, the very first thing you actually have to learn is how to interact with AI in the first place. And in order to do that, you have to learn how to be an effective prompt engineer. The next big thing to talk about is data. If you're trying to work with language models, then the thing that can actually separate your company or product from the rest of the space is the data that you have that you can feed into the model. A lot of people are trying to figure out how to build moats around AI, especially because everybody has access to the open AI API and data and utilizing your specific data and your individualized data is actually one of those things that can help you build a moat for your specific product. With that said, there's going to be a huge need for software engineers and data scientists who actually know how to work with data and bring it in from multiple sources, put it in a good form that can actually be fed into the model and maintain it and develop it over time. This all sounds very easy and kind of behind the scenes, but it's really the fundamental things that go into a model to make it function properly in the first place. If you don't have good data and if you can't actually incorporate and use that into the language model, then there isn't really a good point of using AI in your product. You're just kind of adding a new feature without any utility to the user. There are already companies out there like Langchain that are rolling up OpenAI's API and allowing you to kind of interact with different language models just from their platform alone. And then there's a whole separate world of companies that are maintaining vector databases and understanding how all of those pieces work together is gonna to be a key part of your role as a software engineer in the world of AI. If you actually wanna stay relevant in this space, I think it's really, really important to understand all of those fundamental pieces that go into working with data and how to actually utilize that data to feed into a language model so that you can make a product or a company better and actually help it grow over time. And finally, you have to understand that having AI work with you as a developer right now is really like having a really bad junior developer that you have to give very specific directions to in order to get any tasks done. Based on the amount of work left to do and the number
number of hours left before the festival, I decided to task Son of Anton to use machine learning to debug some of our code. And although that might get better over time as the language models improve, large companies that are going to want to integrate AI into their product are not going to just want it to do everything on its own. They're going to want someone that's there to actually make sure that the output that the AI is producing is correct because they don't want users to be impacted by it when an AI messes something up. And the best people to do that job are going to be the ones that actually understand the entire system and understand how computers and programming works and those are software engineers. So although it may take away some jobs like updating a landing page or fixing a specific button, being the software engineer that actually understands how all the pieces work together and overseeing the AI itself is gonna be a key role in your job description down the line in my opinion. So there you have it. That's my summary of why software engineers are not doomed in the world of AI if you know how to actually adapt to the technology and utilize it in your own toolkit. Of course, if you're a freelance web dev that just makes landing pages and websites for small mom and pop shops, then you might have something to be worried about. But if you're able to actually utilize the technologies that AI provides and incorporate them into all of the things that you know how to do as a software engineer, then you're actually gonna be stronger and more capable in the future. The key things that you can do today are learn and master prompt engineering, understand how data works and how to bring it in from multiple sources and actually feed it into a language model, and be the person that can oversee the AI and make sure that whatever output it's producing is actually correct. Those are kind of my big takeaways and I hope that was valuable to you. If you have more use cases for how AI can benefit software engineers and how software engineers can actually grow and learn more AI and utilize it in their toolkit, please leave them down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.